Hello, my name is Evan, and we're here with the next in a series of videos on how to clear your record in Kern County. So the forms and procedures that we're going to be discussing in this video are generally used throughout the state of California, but the emphasis in this video is how members of the public in Kern County who want to clear convictions from their record can find the information to do it and how they can apply it to the forms that they need. So I'm going to start by showing you on the Kern County Law Library website where you can find the resources and information that we're going to cover today. Uh, pretty important to this presentation is remembering that nothing here has to be memorized. You don't have to commit to memory any of the instructions. The point of giving you a video is so you can go back and rewind and review the information so that you have an easy way to do this yourself if you want to take on this project. So keeping that in mind on our self-help menu, you can go to our how to expunge your record page and you can retrieve all of the materials that you need and information to fill out your paperwork for a petition for dismissal in Kern County. So that includes not just what we're going to cover today about how to fill out the forms, but how to search for your case information, what's going to go into the forms, the forms themselves, and if you have a case that's going to a courthouse outside of Bakersfield, like the Lamont, Shafter, Ridgecrest, et cetera, then we have the schedules for all of the different criminal courts in Kern County posted here as well. So bear in mind that everything you need for this process is on the page. I'm just going to be showing you how you actually fill out the forms with our information guide to walk you through it. So we open up our presentation and we see that you're going to need two forms, both of which are linked on the page I just showed you information about the convictions that you want to clear from your record, and we'll show you how to do that in just a moment. And just a word of caution here is uh, don't skip around through the presentation if you're going to use it to walk yourself through the process. Uh, I have seen people kind of just skip halfway through the presentation and found themselves lost. So if you take it one slide at a time, uh, it should greatly improve the odds that you get a quality product at the end. So before we dive into the presentation, I just want to emphasize, as always, that this is not meant to be construed as advice to any one viewer. This is meant to be an information supplement available to Kern County residents in particular if you're looking to bring a petition to the courts to get a conviction off of your record. So this is meant just to walk you through some general info that can be useful when you are filling out your forms, bringing your petition to the court as a self-represented party. So first, as I mentioned, links to download the forms are available on our webpage. I just showed you where to find those. You can always call or email to request that the forms be emailed to you directly. You should also prepare to fill out your form by using Kern County Superior Court's website to review the information about your convictions. And you can look up your case info by visiting this link on the page right here. So this will take you to Kern County's Superior Court website, straight to the page where you can look for case information. And you will select criminal case info, and you will put in either your case number if you have it, or you can search by your name if you prefer to do it that way. And when you find your case information, the display will look like this. It's going to have your name front and center at the display at the top. It's going to have the court case number, the date it was filed. It's going to have your year of birth, and it's going to have information about what charges were ultimately the ones that were the subject of your trial or when you entered your plea. It's gonna tell you when you entered that plea or when a verdict was reached. So everything you need, in other words, to fill out your paperwork is gonna be displayed on the Superior Court website in a display that looks like this. And the information that we just saw can be used to fill out a petition for dismissal. This is the form you use to request that the court dismiss your old conviction. To begin, you fill in your contact info in the top left part of the form. You are the defendant, and you are representing yourself. People often ask, what do I put where it says firm name? What do I put where it says fax number or state bar number? So these bits of information are unnecessary for non-lawyers. If you are representing yourself, you will include your name, street address, city, state, zip, phone number, and email is optional. 
part of the way this form was redesigned in 2024 is that the uh, address for the court now has to be completed whenever you fill in your paperwork. So if your case is a Bakersfield case, then it's going to be at 1415 Truxton Avenue, Bakersfield, California, 93301. But as I mentioned earlier, this is just an example, and your case may be scheduled in the Shafter Court, the Ridgecrest Court, uh, Delano, etc. And the reason that I emphasize this is that I don't want you just to copy what's in the example here. This is just meant to illustrate what a form looks like when complete. If your case needs to go to the Shafter Court, Delano, etc., you need to make sure to fill in the address for the court right here. And I will show you at the end of this presentation where you can find those court addresses on the Superior Court website. Now you will also pick your own hearing date for your petition and you'll do it by following a few rules and you should contact the court where you will file. If you want to confirm what days of the week you can pick from for uh, criminal motions, at what time they're set and in which department. As I mentioned, we have this information on our webpage, but it never hurts to call and confirm. So here is how you'll schedule your hearing. The three rules that you have to follow are that you must select a date for your hearing that falls on a day of the week where the court hears motions. In other words, you have to pick an available date. For example, if you are trying to expunge a misdemeanor conviction at the Metro building in Bakersfield, their motion schedule is only Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays for misdemeanors at 8.30 a.m. in Division MC. Other courts will keep different schedules, and you can see our webpage for a list. Number two, you must select a date that is at least 15 calendar days after you serve and file your documents. We have a whole separate video devoted to service and filing, so if you want information about that, you can see on our webpage. Uh, but bottom line, you must plan ahead and you need to pick a date where the district attorney, probation department, not to mention the court, gets their copies of your paperwork. And you can file your original documents with the appropriate criminal division with enough advanced notice. So for instance, if you're doing everything on the first day of the month, the earliest that you could possibly set your hearing would be the 16th of that month. That's 15 calendar days later. And again, we have a whole separate video devoted to service and filing, so be sure to watch that. The final rule is you have to pick a date where you are certain you will be able to attend the hearing. If you schedule a hearing and you don't go, your petition will not be considered. So don't pick a date that you don't know for a fact that you can attend. So once you've picked your date, you put in the date, the time, and department. And I know it says for court use only, but in Kern County, you select your own hearing date and you fill it in in the section that reads for court use only. Next, you have to fill in your case number. It is a deal breaker if you miss that, so be sure to fill in the case number or else your paperwork will not be accepted for filing by the clerks. If you want to be completely thorough when filling out your paperwork, you'll notice on page two and three of your petition, there's a blank spot for your case number and your name. You should take a moment and fill in your case number and name in the blank space at the top of those pages so that you don't have any missing information. So now this is where the important part begins. This is where the information about the convictions you want cleared uh, goes onto the paperwork. So that includes the date you were convicted, the code and section, the type of the offense, and whether you want the offense reduced before it is dismissed. So this is a bit of a tricky part, but it's important to note here that only some counts need to be included on your petition. So you see five counts in this case, count one, two, three, four, and five. The ones that need to be included on your petition to remove convictions from your record are charge dispositions that say pled guilty, pled nolo contendere, or Latin for no contest, uh, or guilty verdict. So as a special note, and that's why the asterisk here, the petition for dismissal was designed to help remove convictions from your record, but as the form now notes on page one, you may find that you've actually had some of your convictions cleared automatically by the Department of Justice without you even needing to file a petition. But if you've had a felony cleared automatically and have no more conviction, but it's, it's still a felony, 
you can use this petition to request to reduce the felony to a lesser offense. So I don't want to be construed as saying there's never a reason to put a count on your uh, petition that was dismissed, but we're focusing mainly on people looking to remove convictions from their record in this video. So in this example, you can see that only counts one and three show actual convictions in this case. So only counts one and three need to be included in this example. You can include only the necessary counts on your petition. So you start with your disposition date. This is where you start filling in the information from the web page onto your form. You begin with the date that you pled guilty, pled no contest, or had a guilty verdict reached. And you fill in that disposition date in the blank space where the arrow is pointing. It's easy to miss this one, so don't skip this step. Next up, you get the code from this column. And here the code for counts one and three is vehicle code or VC, but yours may not say VC and that is just fine. This is just an example. Yours might say PC, it might say WI, it might say HS, it might say something else completely. But the point is, whatever it says in the code column, you'll put in code on your petition. Next, you get the section from this column. And you fill in the column titled section with that information. And if it has letters, numbers, parentheses, all of that goes into the box labeled section. Next, you find the type of case, and you fill it in in the uh, type of offense column, and it notes for you on the form that the only possible answers here are felony, misdemeanor, or infraction. So please note that you do not write the name of the offense here. You don't put battery, you don't put driving under the influence. You don't put what the offense was, you put the type, the felony, misdemeanor, or infraction category in which it falls. We get this question from time to time, what if I have a case that has felony convictions and misdemeanor convictions from the same case? So petitions for dismissal for a felony conviction must go to the felony department. So if you have one felony conviction and 10 misdemeanors, this will go to the felony department. If your case started, though, with felony charges, but as part of a plea bargain, or however it got to that point, the charge was reduced to a misdemeanor and you were eventually convicted of a misdemeanor, you'd be setting your hearing in the misdemeanor court in Bakersfield. So the final two boxes on the grid ask you uh, for an uh, answer to a question with specialized knowledge you probably will not have on hand, probably not know off the top of your head. So the column that the red arrow is pointing to is only relevant if you have a felony conviction. If your type of offense is a felony, but it could have been charged as a misdemeanor, you can write yes to ask the court to reduce your offense to a misdemeanor before dismissing it. If your offense was a misdemeanor, skip to the next column. So if your type of offense is a misdemeanor and it could have been charged as an infraction, you can write yes to ask the court to reduce the offense to an infraction before dismissing it. Now, when district attorneys or um, defense lawyers are talking about these types of offenses, they call them wobbler offenses or for the uh, misdemeanors and infraction ones, they call them wobblets. But the point is, with either a wobbler or a wobblet, when the district attorney is deciding to bring a charge against a defendant, they have a choice to make sometimes, like for battery, for instance. A district attorney looking to charge someone with criminal battery can do it either as felony battery or as misdemeanor battery. This is a wobbler offense. And hundreds of criminal offenses in California are wobblers and wobblets. If you mark yes under these boxes and your offense is one that was eligible to be reduced to a lesser offense, the court may first reduce your type of offense and grant the dismissal. One option to check whether your offense is a wobbler or wobblet is to take the code section that you've filled in on the grid and Google whether it is a wobbler or wobblet or not. 
So for example, if you Google, is penal code section 242 a wobbler? Many times criminal defense attorneys in the state of California have prepared well-researched blogs in which they will answer the question for you straightforwardly. So if you want to go to a criminal defense attorney's webpage that has answered this question for you, uh, if they've been kind enough to put the information out, you might as well make use of it. But you have the option as well, of course, to go to the source of the law itself. California State Legislature's webpage is reviewable anywhere you have internet access. So you can always review the text of the law itself by going to the web page listed right here and entering in the code section you're researching. So Penal Code 242, you can look up on the California Legislature's page as well if you prefer not to go the route of searching for criminal defense attorneys who've written about the topic. But even if the court does not reduce your offense from a felony to a misdemeanor or from a misdemeanor to an infraction, you're still able to bring the petition to ask to have your conviction dismissed anyway. So once complete, this section tells the court the date of the final outcome of your case, the code and section of your conviction, and whether the court may reduce your type of offense before dismissing. So I wanna emphasize that the grid you're looking at from page one, this is just an example, and the details of your case will definitely be different. So be sure to fill in only the details from your case. This is again, just an example. So if you have more than one count you're trying to clear, like in the example we just saw, it has space for up to five on your CR-180. If you have convictions for more than five counts from a single case, you can use a standard attachment form from the Judicial Council to add more to your petition. As long as the counts have the same case number and disposition date, you can put them on the same petition. So remember, if all counts are misdemeanors, you're going to be filing in the misdemeanor department. If any count is a felony, it would go to the felony department. So this is a look at what we've gotten filled in so far in our petition. To fill out the rest of the form, you will need your sentence information from your case. And you can get this from the court case information you saw how to look up earlier. So below the grid that we're looking at right here, beginning at paragraph two all the way through number seven, all of these describe different ways a person can qualify for expungement, and only one will apply in your case. So read your sentence information to confirm the result of your case. The next slide is going to show you where to look. So you review the sentence information to see the outcome of your case. So again, this is just below where you find all the information to fill in the first portion of the form, and in your sentence information, you can see what the actual outcome was of your case once the conviction was entered and a sentence was pronounced. In this case, you can see the petitioner had probation granted. It states it clearly right here. This is very common, but your sentence may differ, so you have to review what the outcome was in your case. But following the example we see from this case we looked up earlier, the petitioner in this example had misdemeanor probation, which would mean they would mark the uh, checkbox next to number two suggesting that this was a person who had felony or misdemeanor with probation granted as their sentence. So uh, when you mark box number two, you have to select at least one box below, box A, B, or C. So if you had a felony or misdemeanor with probation granted, if you mark box A, it means that you completed your probation. So in other words, you fulfilled each condition for the entire period of probation. If you were off of probation early, that's what marking box B would mean. And if you'd like to make a, court, a statement to the court uh, that the petition should be granted in the interests of justice, then you can write a statement to that effect down here after you check box C. So the other options, if you did not get probation, Let's say, for instance, you had a misdemeanor or an infraction with a sentence other than probation. So let's say it was a disturbing the peace case, a relatively uh, minor misdemeanor offense, which resulted in just some time in jail or a fee or both, but no probation. That would be when you would check the box next to number three. Number four is specifically for convictions under Penal Code Section 647B only and where the a petitioner was convicted because they were a victim of human trafficking. 
Paragraph five is if you had a county jail sentence under penal code section 1170H5 or a felony prison sentence. Paragraph six is if you had a prison sentence which would, under today's laws, result in a jail sentence after these uh, laws were changed by Prop 47 in the year 2011. So these commonly include things like possession of certain types of narcotics and petty theft. And then paragraph seven is if you had deferred entry of judgment in your case. So you don't have to write anything next to paragraphs eight or nine on your paperwork. And at the bottom of page three, you need to date your document, print your name, and sign. After you've done that, you've completed the CR 180. And you can move on to form number two, CR 181, order for dismissal. And most of this form gets filled out by the court after your hearing. So even though you do not fill in a lot of information on this form, a copy also gets served alongside the CR 180 on the DA and probation department before you file your original paperwork with the court. Again, we have a separate video about service and filing, so be sure to check that out. This is what the CR 181 looks like. This is the order for dismissal. And in this case, all you have to do is fill in your contact information and case information that you filled in on the CR 180. The image you're seeing right now represents how much of this form needs to be completed prior to submission to the court. The court would complete the rest after your hearing has concluded. So with that, you've completed the petition for dismissal and order for dismissal, and you should review them for completeness. Uh, if it's your first time seeing this paperwork, and in all likelihood it is, it could be very natural to make errors or omissions as you are filling in the form. So be sure to look through it at least once before you run your copies to have served on the district attorney and probation department. So after the DA and probation are served, you will have to your paperwork filed with the court. This is again covered in a video that you can watch on the same page. So be sure to look at that once you are confident you've got your paperwork concluded. If you want to bring your CR 180 and 181 to the law library during our regular hours of operation, which are always posted on our website, you may come in and we can review them for completeness. So to emphasize what that means, we cannot read a statement you make to the court or see a checkbox that you have filled in and tell you this was a legally advisable or inadvisable statement to make or box to check we can conclude that the paperwork has been completed sufficient to get it ready for filing in the court. That again does not mean we can advise you on what is the optimum way for you to approach this process, just what is objectively correct or incorrect. That said, you're welcome to come and have us look at your paperwork to ensure that no obvious errors or incomplete sections on the form are left, then that you're ready to make your copies and have them served and filed so you can reserve your date and ask the court to remove the conviction or convictions from your record.